What's good? My name is Zachary Carroll, AKA Pastor Z, and this is Christian Hood Talk, where we help you apply the Bible to all of life's craziness. Before we begin, if this is your first time here, welcome, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Come join the talk, what are you doing? We here to apply the Bible to everything. We talk about the righteous, the ratchet, the real, everything, because the Bible can be applied to anything and everything. The trial of R. Kelly has been going on for about three or four weeks. And as I listen to the witnesses, uh, as they give their testimony of the things that they went through, things that were done to them, I can't help but cringe. I really began hating R. Kelly. I about to say Kanye West, sorry, another video. But I believe the Holy Spirit reminded me of some key principles, some key biblical principles uh, related to this situation that we all can benefit from. So stay tuned. The first thing we can learn is our battle is not against flesh and blood. Often we like to vilify people and R. Kelly is being vilified right now for his behavior and conduct, rightly so, but we need to think about this biblically. He is a victim of sexual immorality. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Sin is ultimately the greatest evil in existence. And each and every one of us can be manipulated, controlled, and confused by its power. This is applicable to R. Kelly because through his sexual indulgences, he allowed his lust and desire to grow to such a degree that it led him to participate and require and make and manipulate other people to participate in this sexually immoral lifestyle. And it all started, I, in my opinion, it all started from this need and desire to fulfill lust, to fulfill the spirit of sexual desire outside of marriage. The second thing we need to understand is that each and every one of us can be overtaken, manipulated, controlled by the schemes of the devil. Lust always starts small. It always starts in just an insignificant desire or whisper in the back of our mind that makes us want to look at that attractive person a little bit longer, makes us want to daydream about doing things uh, with somebody that we find attractive. The issue is when it starts small and you start to indulge it, you start to feed it, it grows. It's no longer insignificant. It grows until death. And it's not always a physical death, it's a spiritual death. Just think about it. Think about the first time you had sex out of wedlock. You lost your virginity. I'm willing to say, and this is obviously not the case for everyone, but it was for me, I'm not a virgin, that when I lost my virginity, I felt bad. I felt very bad. I felt like I was doing something wrong. I think most people, the first time they've had sex, the first time, they, and it's not to their husband or wife, you feel bad. Deep down, you feel bad. Of course, you'll never tell anybody and you probably won't even admit it just watching this video, but you, you felt bad. But notice, how did that feeling last the more you kept having sex? After a while, you no longer thought it was bad. You no longer thought it was something you weren't supposed to do. And I'm here to tell you that that is, that is because your sexual lust grew from a seed, insignificant little seed, to now, to death. That's a form of spiritual death when you no longer feel bad, you no longer feel convicted when you walk away from God's holiness and indulge in your sexual desire. James 1, 13 through 15. 
Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Then when, his, when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it gives birth to death. Over time, indulging in your sexual desire, indulging in sexually immoral behavior grows the sin in your life. So we need to make sure that we protect ourselves, which leads me into point number three. Paul tells us what type of things we can use to help us protect ourselves from this power of the dark world and others. Ephesians 6, 14. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Verse 16. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, which which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil. First is the belt of truth. Now, and Paul was talking about ancient Roman society. So when he talks about a soldier, he's referring to a Roman soldier. And a Roman soldier's belt or sash was fitted to give him freedom of movement. The truth, meaning your purpose in God, your walk with him, your focus on him, the truth being Jesus Christ gives you freedom. People think that indulging in your fleshly desires is true freedom. Well, if that's the case, stop it. Go six months without drinking alcohol. Go six months without having sex outside of marriage. In fact, go a year. If you felt that deep guttered ugh, feeling at just the thought of not doing any of these things, you are not truly free. Whatever it is that you can't give up has control over you. The breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of a Roman soldier protected his heart the most in his lungs, the most vital parts of his body during battle. So the breastplate of us is the walk of Christ, is walking upright with him, following him, submitting him. You know what? You will have sexual desire. That's not gonna go anywhere. I have sexual desire and it's definitely not going anywhere. I can attest to you. But even though my desire, my flesh desires to walk away from God, I know and I have made the choice and I continually make the choice on a daily basis to follow him and to walk his path. And that is what protects me from the schemes of the devil. If I rely on my desire, if I rely on my feelings and my flesh, I am a feather in the wind. As soon as something happens, as soon as a gorgeous woman that is probably no good for me walks by, I'm gonna pursue her and I have. As soon as somebody presents an opportunity to me to make a lot of money if through illicit ways, I'm gonna pursue that because I, I mean, it's, I'm only using my own desires to guide me. So whatever I feel like doing, I do. That, that makes you vulnerable to the schemes of the devil. He's okay with you believing you're free. He knows the truth. The devil is not an idiot. He knows the truth. He knows you think you're free because you get to do whatever you want. And the things that you start doing, you ain't gonna be able to stop doing. And guess what? You didn't got trapped. You didn't got got. They got you. And finally, the shield of faith. The shield of faith, the faith is when you rest in God and rely on him to provide all the things that you desire. The Bible says he will give you the desires of your heart when you delight in his way. So when you are following God, when you have rested in the idea that he is going to provide everything you need, all of your wishes, all of the desires of your flesh, Rely on him to provide that, not yourself and not the world. When you rely on God to provide all of the things that you need, you are donning the shield of faith, which allows you to protect yourself. That was what the shield, the Roman soldier's shield was necessary to protect him from all of the darts, the spears, the, the, the rocks, everything that was being thrown at him. 
Let me know what you think. Is R. Kelly just an evil person that's gonna get what he deserves? Do you agree that each and every one of us could be subjected to this sexual sin and be led to do crazy stuff? I'd love to talk about it with you in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, subscribe, join the talk, like the video, share with a friend if you thought it was informative and enticing. My name is Zachary Carroll. This is Christian Hood Talk. Y'all be cool.